Well, you join me here today in Egypt, a very different uh, location uh, in this today's video. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, why have you come to Egypt to make this video on lost railways? You know, we're all interested in the uh, UK ones. Well, as I stand at the foot of one of the wonders of the world, uh, one of the great pyramids of Giza. Oh, of course not. It's just, um, it's Oasis Beach Pool in Bedford, built in 1992. You know, it's not far off, is it? Uh, we've just seen better days, uh, to say the least. In fact, you could mistake that as a high security prison. Anyway, that's not what I'm here to see today. This just happens to stand right near the beginning of my route for today along one of the railway lines. Right then, I've spent quite a lot of time looking at online satellite maps. And anyone who does the same, you'll be aware that sometimes you'll be looking at one and you think you're looking at a typical railway line from above. And you're following it down and trying to figure out which one it is. And then on closer inspection, it turns out it's... Well, it's gone. It's not there. It's What you're actually looking at is a former railway line, which has managed to retain most of its presence on aerial views through means of vegetation and scars on the landscape and although bits and pieces here and there have been reclaimed by farmland or industrial purposes I think it's safe to say that most old lines which are closed are still almost entirely traceable and things like Google Earth and side-by-side -side maps will confirm these for definite now in my last video I went and had a look at some abandoned roads or ghost roads as they're affectionately known I received a few comments from people mentioning how they're interested in old railway infrastructure too. Well, so am I. And it just so happens that there are a few examples, once again, local to where I'm from, in Bedfordshire again, that we can go and have a look at. So I'll try to make it to a few places today that will cover um, a couple of different railway lines in the area. We can look for structures, relics, anything that's been left behind on these thin strips of land which would have once had trains hurtling down them most days for over a century until all of a sudden they were closed and have been ever since behind me you'll be able to see one of the first abandoned relics that i've come across today let's go and have a look as we say farewell to one of the Ancient wonders of the world. Oh, hang on. No. No, of course. Yep. Yeah. Well, you join me here at the beginning of the first example of Ghost Railway that I'll be taking a look at today. And this is the Bedford to Sandy section of the old Varsity Line, which connected Oxford and Cambridge via rail services and did so for well over a hundred years, from 1851 all the way up to 1968. When this bloke came along, Dr. Beechin, and thought, nah, get rid of it. Get rid of this one. Get rid of this one now. What, the, the very handy varsity line that connects Oxford and Cambridge? Yes. Get it gone. And that was that. But, of course, only sections of the Varsity Line ended up closing because you can still board a train at Bedford and travel down to Bletchley on a part of the line that I crossed in my previous video, the Ghost Roads of England. That is part of the original Varsity Line and is still in operation to this day. But, unfortunately, the section I'm walking down right now, Bedford to Sandy, as well as continuing all the way up to Cambridge, was axed. And I've already just made it to the second uh, bridge. Second relic of the day. There's the route of the railway there, but I bet if you went over this area here with a metal detector, you would find some fantastic stuff. 120 years worth of people throwing things out of carriage windows, coins, all sorts, I bet. Maybe that's for a future video. But for now, let's carry on a bit further. Of course, other than railway bridges, I'm hoping to find other traces of this lost railway as I continue further down 
the original route. I know there's definitely going to be some bits and pieces lurking ready for me to discover. Uh, I think I found my uh, third possible trace here. Let me just just turn you around. Fence posts. This is just to the side of the railway. It's embankment. Uh, yeah, these must date certainly towards the end of the railway's life. I'm expecting to find things such as sleepers on the side of the railway. Maybe even rails themselves. I thought most of it got scrapped, but they may have left some bits and pieces. There we go, that didn't take long, did it? Part of an old sleeper, I'm guessing. Oh God, there's no chance moving that, but yeah, there we have it then. That will have been sitting on the side since the 60s. Well, maybe slightly later if they didn't pull up the railway straight away. But I can imagine most have been repurposed by now. That's quite a common thing, repurposing old railway sleepers. I've seen a lot being used for footbridges on footpaths that go over streams and stuff. But there's plenty of other uses for them. Just crossed a couple of bridges up there as we head further towards Willington where the first station on this line is or the remains of it anyway on the side here unmistakably railway bricks dumped in a pile here I think the type of bricks they usually used are called blue engineering bricks. I believe these type of bricks here, what their official name is. And there's plenty of these type of bricks to be seen on railways across the country. There's likely, there'll be entire viaducts built with bricks like that. Some of which have been blown up. Definitely seen a few bits of footage of Actual Victorian viaducts getting blown up. It's quite unbelievable that, that, they, that they could just do that to such pieces of engineering excellence. It's what they are, isn't it, really? Especially as they were being built in the 1850s, 60s. Stick a few bits of dynamite in. Without a care. That one in particular, what, what harm was that doing? There's plenty of abandoned ones that still stand. Just leave them alone. They might even be useful once again in the future. Recycle them. I think we're coming up to now what is labelled on the map as Old Coal Train Bridge. And once again, we can see. Plenty more engineering bricks used for this bridge, which was possibly used for farmers to get over the railway. But yeah, here it is. Looks like Jason's uh, claimed this bridge now for whatever reason. You can imagine the trains. <laughs> see what it's like on, on top. I think I've been up there before. Looks fairly slippy so uh, I'll, I'll meet you up there. Maybe it's easier taking that route. Oh as I'm greeted by an old sleeper, moss covered sleeper, unashamedly sticking out of the ground there. Come on in. Ah. Thank you very much, Hawthorne tree. Okay, well I have made it to the top of Coal Train Bridge. Why it's called that, I'm unsure. Obviously, plenty of coal trains would have gone underneath this bridge, but why has it taken the name of Coal Train Bridge? Maybe you know. Um, I'm not sure. Obviously, this metal... Girder is um, to 
prevent vehicles from traveling over this now but I'm not too sure if it's even possible for any to get up here in the first place so could have been standing here in the 1800s witnessing steam trains pass underneath towards Bedford towards Sandy and onto Cambridge well, here we are this is what's left of the infrastructure of this railway line. 60 years after closure, and this bridge is still standing, still accessible, just, just about. But um, yeah, how many more years will this bridge stand here? Maybe, maybe it will be refurbished. But I doubt it. It's got no real purpose anymore, has it? So it's a ghost of the days gone by rather than risk my life going back down there i can probably battle through these thorns it's not as bad as i um thought it was down here so i can probably oh this has turned into a little bit of an adventure here so oh here we go it's geo wizard territory way you mind cool i wondered what the smell was i haven't in fact soiled my pants uh, that's the sewage works over there, so... Oh, thank God for that. Ooh. What's that brick story, then? How did that get there? And let's get back on the route of the Varsity Line. Yeah, I will say here, then, is thanks to anyone who's watched my uh, previous video or videos. Um, I definitely wasn't expecting uh, the Ghost Roads video to do quite as well as that in the first two weeks or so and definitely wasn't expecting to get this many subscribers after just two videos so yeah massive thank you to anyone who has subscribed if you haven't subscribe if you want <laughs> yeah, if you enjoy these sort of videos I'll try and make quite a lot more of them so there we go we've had a look at old coal train bridge relic number well I've lost count if you count all the little ones like individual um, sleepers and stuff like that so yeah we've seen a few another major one to come though um, which is Willington station that won't be too long now cool. Whoa, sprinted past me there he's very eager to have a look at Willington station as am I in terms of bottles, I've not seen any anywhere as near as old as the ones I was finding on my last trip. Yeah, look at that, very modern. I'm sure there are a lot more older ones that are buried underneath the soil. Just modern ones I've seen so far. No milk bottles. What an absolute shock that is. A421 bypass is about to plough through the route of this old railway so I'm going to have to cross over it using a very modern footbridge. Another person very eager to see the relics of this railway. Not too long now mate. Interesting. Got a little, uh, one of these things that you turn and it tells you a bit about the history. Let's see if it works. Select. Oh. All right, I'll turn you till the message plays. Till you decide to talk. Come on. Oh. Does it get any louder if you vigorously keep turning it? Hmm, I mean it might have been a little bit better just a few hundred yards up there, but yeah, either turn the volume up or Please turn me till the message plays. you can hear him fairly well. 
and some of the other voices the people I think talking about the history of the Cardington hangars where numerous film sets are now uh, built in one of those hangars that it used to be used for constructing airships in the early 20th century including the famous R101 which well met a very sudden demise the bench at the end of its life there it's made way for this shiny new one well look what this sign's fastened onto more sleepers I think they ran out of old sleepers at this point so they just used a mock one there Sleepers looking a bit worse for wear there. They are. Uh, I suppose they've just gone back into nature, haven't they? Been bits of tree in the first place. Right, here we are then. What are we coming up to now? The train stops. Bedford to Cambridge. Opened the 7th of July 1862. And it survived for 106 years before closing in 1968 all about it here I think in a minute I'll be seeing that hut so I'll be seeing Willington station but not as it appears in this photograph all I think I'll be able to see is part of the overgrown platform and here is that old hut mentioned on that information board like it's still used to this day as a local hideout for teenagers another piece of history ticked off and then we've got the line continuing up the trains will be slowing down now from Bedford as they approach Willington station and I can see it now <laughs> No, well, I think you'll find it is. This is all that remains then of Willington Railway Station. The platform's completely overgrown now. And wait for the next train. Might take a while. No, I've never had a proper look at this. I've walked by it a few times before, but I've never had a a proper close-up investigation certainly no longer resembles the these photographs of it as it was when this line was in operation Let's see where the platform begins just down here and works its way up nature has well and truly taken over this station I made it, I made it up onto the platform. It's really hard to imagine that people would have waited here um, for trains. To Bedford, Oxford, Cambridge, all these destinations. A complete layer of moss and dirt has developed over the years, a bit like one of the ghost roads I went to in the last video and I would have been able to step out onto a carriage any objects lying around from when it was a station I can imagine if there was definitely been taken away by now I wonder if the old Willington station sign still exists it probably does stuff like that would have surely been salvaged by enthusiasts yeah there really is not much left now 
Although, what have we got here? Oh, just a just a modern Bacardi breezer, I think. Yeah. Oh well. Nowadays, there really is not much to see, other than the platform itself and foliage. Really, probably bits of the demolished station in a heap there, in which looks like a sleeper sticking out. Another one. And what have we got there? What is that? A piece of pipe or something? Oh. Um, is that the top of a, a jar? Hmm. To do with the railway though? Hmm, I'm not sure. Got any ideas? I'm sure all the old pieces of brick you can see though are indeed bits and pieces that have been demolished and left in a heap here for however many years. So there we go, old Willington Station. Tick. And no, I am not the fifth beetle. Just let my hair get a little bit long. Um, or Jimmy Hill, as someone mentioned in the comments. But, uh, hmm. well, all right then. <laughs> now, there are plans to reinstate the Varsity Line, which would once again link Oxford to Cambridge via rail for the first time in 60 years. As of filming this video, the exact same month, in fact, it's been announced that the relaying of the track between Bicester and Bletchley has been completed on the 7th of March, which was actually the exact day I uploaded the video before this one. Anyway, the relaying of track between Bedford and Cambridge, however, well, that's going to be a lot more tricky. And you just need to have a quick scan of the original route on side-by-side -side maps to see why. Here we have the former sandy approach and you've got instances where the route goes entirely through someone's house there. Or rather, they've just built someone's house right on the flipping route. I wonder if the people living there actually realise they might not. What now then? Well, well, a number of different ways to work around this were devised and Route E was finally selected, which I think has been tweaked a little bit in the last few years. But this would see an entirely new section of track bed constructed, which would loop north of Bedford towards Tempsford, where a new station would be built. And it would completely bypass Sandy. And then it heads to the new town of Camborne. And the route eventually joins up with an existing line in Cambridge. And so for this to work, it would require the controversial compulsory acquisition, and then obviously demolition of up to 65 houses in Bedford so that an additional two tracks can be laid north of Bedford station. So that would mean all of these houses along here are condemned. As I said, controversial. Just had a quick coffee in the Willington Danish Camp Cafe. It's now time for me to head to another old railway line I want to talk about but because this one is the other side of Bedford and I came out to this one a bit later than planned it will be on a different day that I visit that one but for you it will be well it'll be right about now oh graceful cut there so it is a different day I'm now quite slightly northwest of Bedford um, on another line, another disused railway line. I wanted to include at least two in this video. I'm now about to venture down a strip of this former railway line which linked Bedford and Northampton via Olney and a selection of little villages. Now this line opened in June 1872 which was uh, quite a few years after the Varsity Line, the previous line I looked at. 
And this railway, like the previous one, was a victim of the beaching cuts in the 60s. And it was 1962 in particular that this one met its end. Oh, and here's the first landmark already. Now this is known as Skylark Cottage. And it was constructed as the Crossing Keeper's Cottage. And it was built the same year as the railway and stood just to the side. Cool. How long is it going to be? How long will it be until this chimney comes down? It's looking very precarious now. Look at that then. <laughs> you can still see the old fireplaces in here. And once upon a time the railway crossing keeper would have sat and stoked a fire there. That was probably the bedroom. And now look at the state of it. Just a shell. I wonder who laid that brick in 1872. Josiah Walker, I reckon. Imagine if I just got that bang on. I mean, this side isn't even attached whatsoever to this bit anymore. This really has been left open to the elements for, well, for approximately 62 years, I should think. Great piece of abandoned railway history standing here for how much longer can't see it clocking up another 62 years can you i wonder who the crossing keepers were over the years who was the first person and who was the last this cottage would have had the best part of 90 years worth of residents workers railway workers and uh now it's a very sad sight, but good that it still exists in a way, the remnants. You can even still see some of the slate which would have been on the roof. There's a piece of it, and other bits lying around too. So there we go, Skylark Cottage. We've seen it. And just down here I've actually noticed something quite, quite interesting. There is still one of the crossing gates still here, albeit sort of rotting away on the side of the path. But yeah, this, this is unmistakably one of the crossing gates that the, the keepers would have been opening and closing every day. Still sitting here on the side of the path. Right, let's move on then, shall we? Let's continue down the route a bit further. Oh no. <laughs> oh. Oh, great. Flashbacks. Flashbacks to um, the last video there. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, that's no, that's no good. That's not good. I think it's inevitable that I'm about to get absolutely caked in mud. Oh, yeah, do you mind, mate? Yeah, come on, that, that's enough. It's going well so far. It's quite a satisfying sound, actually. Come on, son. Come on, I need, I need a solar flare or something, just so you can just quickly dry up all this. So I can walk through it properly. And I've stumbled across another hut to the side. So let's go and have a look. Be rude not to. It's quite similar to the other one I looked at earlier, but just um, a lot less graffiti. Just about get in. Here we are. So, oh, what would this have been used for? Um, as a shelter for people repairing the railway. It's got a uh, year's worth of carvings on here. Well, they're actually quite recent. We've got a, got a 2016. Well, actually, we've got a mixture. We've got John, who was here in 1978. Uh, we've got a 
1988. Wow, all different eras. 94. Ali, 1994. B, wherever you are. Pat. I find old carvings fascinating, just imagining who they were and what they were doing at that time. But anyway, let's make a move. I've got further to go. Excuse me. Okay, and that was a hut on the old Bedford to Northampton branch. Let's continue though. Now this section of the old line is now Stevington Country Walk. Uh, which has obviously been um, turned into a footpath. You can still see remains of the bridge, which used to carry the railway over this road and further on towards Turvey and Olney. But private. Now, yeah, unfortunately, I'm going to have to take a diversion down through the village of Stevington and then back onto the route, which is a bit annoying. Come on, just, just open up the route. Just let us walk down there. Just to make the whole line the country walk, but oh well. Oh, there we are, what I was talking about earlier. I'm now coming up to a spot where I can get back on the path of the old line in the form of another old railway bridge. Coming up to it now. This one is a mini viaduct. Again, you've got the blue engineering bricks. Seen all over the country, places like this. And this one I'm going to walk entirely over. Here we go. Right in the middle then, so you can imagine once upon a time, trains passing under this bridge and the smoke would bellow up, covering you in soot and ash. And carrying on down there towards Bedford. They've even reused sleepers here as steps down to the track bed. So let's use them. And unlike the last one, this one is still in use. I've just seen, well, a few minutes ago, I saw someone riding a horse going across it. Ooh. It's good to see this one isn't in quite as much of a state, or nowhere near as much of a state as the, the previous one. It's a better looking one, really, isn't it? Anyway. Eighteen seventy-two. The next station, if you carried on that way, would be Turvey. I think I might have time to go and see it. Let's see one station on this line, like we did with the Bedford to Cambridge one. The line has now become a narrow footpath because this is part of the estate uh, for some reason. They've claimed that bit, but okay, well, we'll carry on then. I'll soon be at Turvey Station, but not before I pass under the third bridge of the video, the second of this line. Oh, well, this is getting silly now. Looks like the fun continues. Finally, some luscious green grass to walk on. And not a swamp as I chase this duck. Oh, okay, it's got away. And now, as the video almost comes to a close, I'm approaching Turvey Station End, where Turvey Station used to stand. And in front of me is the A428. There's a quick 
example of a ghost road making a little cameo in this video. Here we can see some old signage which says or used to say Railway Swan and that's because this building here used to be the Railway Swan public house which um, is now a private residence down the aptly named Station Road and some very nice Victorian villas we have Turvey Station and the original building still stands today that's good to see this would be the first stop on the Bedford to Northampton branch in quite a nice setting really I always like to see it when old station buildings have been repurposed and survive in this day and age there's far too many that were demolished right whew. all that talking has made me a bit thirsty